Stories stir the soul. Stories reveal. And stories heal. In this podcast, we will give you an inside look at someone who's had a life-changing breakthrough. Real people, real stories with real breakthroughs. As a health and wellness expert and coach and Todd as a men's mentor, we've seen firsthand what God can do when it comes to a breakthrough. So lean in, listen well. This could be your biggest breakthrough. Welcome to this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. I'm Wendy Pett. I'm oh, you need your microphone. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Oh, I'm, my goodness. I was going to say, I'm Todd Isburner. Well, yes, and, you uh, are. Now you can hear who I am, too. Oh, I'm so right. thankful. Well, that's, that's actually <laughs> hey, a good lead in. Every once in a while, you can't get it all right. It's okay. That's true. So that is a good lead in to ask, how's your attitude you today, know, Todd? It, it was doing okay, <laughs> but I'm not quite sure why you're asking. <laughs> Well, you know, your attitude can have just a profound effect on how you go about leading others and your attitude, whether it's good or bad, can just really affect your daily performance, your response to others and practically dictate how your day goes. Yeah, so true. I mean, attitude is kind of, it's kind of like a joy in a way because you have to choose. Mm. You've got to choose to have joy and you've got to choose to have a good attitude. That is so true. Yeah. And today on Your Biggest Breakthrough, we have a very special guest who is a very special person in our lives. Pastor Jerry Hobbs has been my spiritual dad for over 15 years. He calls me baby girl or darling. And Todd wasn't so sure of that when we were recording <laughs> until he met Jerry and understood his Southern way. But Jerry Hobbs, he's 83 years young. He's pastored for 47 years. He's preached around the world. He's preached in Africa to over 15 million people at one time. He's built churches in, in Central and South America in what was called church planting evangelism. He's been married to the lovely Lucretia for 62 years, father of one daughter, four grandkids, and eight great-grands. And he is an author, and he's an incredible, incredible human being, speaker, pastor, and just friend. And so welcome, Papa Hobbs. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you. Yes. Just looking at your faces, y'all are such wonderful people. Mm. Well, back at you. Yes. I can tell you that for sure. You <laughs> yes. have been a constant encourager. Mm -hmm. No matter who you come across, God has given you a gift to encourage and to also speak the truth. I have noticed that about Jerry over the years. And I don't think it's just his Southern culture. This man, when he speaks the truth, will speak it directly and forthrightly. And honestly, that is what we just love about you, Jerry. Yeah. What you see is what you get. And he always Jerry. does it with a good attitude. Yeah, with a good attitude. <laughs> well, that's what Jesus did. You know, when yeah. he spoke, he was rather abrupt and had no uh, political uh, culture skills in his vocabulary. Truth was truth. He was truth. Yeah. That's right. That's and right. that's all we can do is speak truth. And speaking of attitude, you know, I, I learned a long time ago that you can lose your wealth, your health, your family, your friends, everything that you hold dear, but you never lose your attitude, good or bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you've always got this attitude. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good attitude, no matter what you've lost or what you've gained, you're still ahead of the game because your attitude will carry you through. That's what right. if you don't know whether you have a good or a bad attitude? How can you then find ask out? Jerry? Jerry will tell you. <laughs> I think we know we're not mm -hmm. stupid. Right. You know, when you're being a, a horse's patoot, <laughs> you know, you know, when you're not being congenial and kind and caring. Yeah. And uh, if you know that he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it becomes a stinking sin. Mm -hmm. So bad attitude can take you right down into a sinful type nature. Mm. Yeah. In all the years, Jerry, that you pastored um, numerous churches with hundreds of people, um, you've, you've been around a lot of situations and circumstances, and you've, you've helped people and guide them through different things, but you've been through a lot yourself. And so on your biggest breakthrough, we, we really like to dive in and talk about 
um, your faith breakthrough. So I'd love to hear um, and be refreshed about when you first um, received Christ and how that walk went. And also your biggest breakthrough within your own life and how um, it has helped to um, help you guide others through their own situations and circumstances. Because you've got a, a couple that I know you want to touch on. You know, I was blessed to be raised by parents who were God-loving, spirit-filled people. And we were not asked, allowed to ask why. And my mother always taught me, said, if you ever grow up and come to know the Lord in a gracious relationship, you'll never be able to ask the question of why. Because of certain things that happen in life and, and you have to accept them. You accept them with the fact that God is able to help you get through the difficult times as well as any other times. So I grew up with that understanding. I understood that when mom and dad said to do something, that's just the way it was. And I never tried to figure out an alternative. So I grew up taking the word of God as such. Proverbs 3 and 5, uh, three and five said, trust in the Lord with A-L-L, -L, all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. And then verse 6 says, but in all, A-L-L, -L, thy ways, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Explicit recommendations there that does not lead us to look for an alternative. Trust in God is a primary thing that we have to have. If we're going to get through the difficult times in life, and yes, I faced some uh, numerous difficult times. Lucretia and I started out in ministry after we left college, and I was pastoring by the time I was 22 years of age, 150 people, and I was green as a gourd and, and twice as ignorant. I mean, <laughs> college does not teach you how to be smart. It just teaches you about certain principles. Hmm. But the things I did in starting out as a pastor, that was a, is abhorring to me now. But we do live and we do learn. Mm -hmm. But in all of that, I then in my personal life and facing ministry with other people and being able to, 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 to counsel with hundreds and thousands of people. And I've heard everything that can be heard in a pastor's study. If I wrote a book, I would not be able to put my name to it. So I don't mm. write a book <laughs> of people's problems. Mm. But we too have problems, don't we, guys? At the end I, of the day. Very much so. Yeah, absolutely. But Jerry, I'm just picturing you now in the, in one of your many pastors' offices, listening to hundreds and thousands of people share their stories and their hurts and their circumstances and their offenses and all that stuff. Uh, how did you protect yourself? How did you maintain a peaceful, loving spirit with a good attitude when you were so bombarded with such negative stuff? Well, <clears throat> first thing you have to remember is that when people come to you and sit across from you, they're not there really to listen to you. You're there to listen to them. Good word. Please don't do what I did one time. I'd had an exhausting day and too many people coming through. And it was the end of the day, but it was a hot summer day in Dallas, Fort Worth. The air conditioning was on and my office was cool and the drapes were pulled. And I had a beautiful office. I leaned back as the lady was talking and put my feet on the desk. And somehow I slumbered off. Oh, <laughs> snoozeville. Well, you were a good listener up to that point. So I hear this voice, Pastor, Pastor, are you okay? And I tried to cover as best I, I said, yes, I'm just in deep thought. As to what <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. But, you know, I, I, you realize at the end of the day, when you've heard all these things that they don't belong to you. Uh -huh. mm. It's kind of like you got to stop work. there. No, that is so, so key to remember. Because it's like it's working at the yeah. treasury. 
Yeah. 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 You yeah. see all this gold and coins they're making, but none of it belongs to you. Mm. At the end of the day, you're shaken down, go home as broke as you were when you went to work. Mm. Well, that's the way we have to be when we take, we can't take people's problems. We simply share with them solutions or recommendations. And um, so that's how I survived. I never took my problems home and, and took, out issues with my family. Lucretia never knew what my agenda was throughout that day. I just went home and I was just sweetheart to her and daddy to my daughter. Wow. I mean, that is so powerful. That is so powerful because so many people take the burdens of whatever goes on at work and Mm -hmm. they bring it home and then they end up, you know, colliding and, and fighting with their spouse and taking it out on their kids and, yeah, wow. and, it's, and it, it sometimes becomes like a cow chewing a, a cud because you just <laughs> you just chew on it and chew on it, and then you start talking about it, and you chew on it some it gets more. Worse. It doesn't get you anywhere. It, right? it creates angst mm-hmm. and, and animus, and there's nothing you can do uh, once that gets started. It's kind of like uh, a guy told me, he said, you know, it's been a bad day at my house. The dog and the cat got in a fight, and then my kid got involved and kicked the dog for fighting the cat. My wife got on the kid for fi- fighting with the dog, and I got on to her for hitting the kid. And for long, you know, it's just uh, the turmoil is from the cat and the dog all the way up to mom and dad, you know. And then by the yeah. time the dad got home, it had escalated, and and there was there was turmoil just uh, steaming in the air. But somewhere. Sometime you have to make your home. And, and I got to tell you this, you, you might laugh about it, but when I was a boy, my mom and dad never allowed my brother and I to make our shout at home and scream and holler inside the house. If we raised our voice a little bit, my father was an Englishman uh, by heritage. My mother was a German, full-blooded German oh, I know by bloodline. And- <laughs> Go Germans. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's his law. <laughs> but he uh, he wouldn't let us be loud. And hum- if you want to scream, go outside. We got a big backyard, a big front yard, and you scream your lungs out, and then come in. But you shut your mouth and respect the house. It's, this is where we have peace and quietness. And so our home was always peace and quietness. And and my wife Lucretia can tell you to this day, our home is. Uh, just filled with peace it and is. tranquility. Beautiful. And but you kind of have tranquility if you've got turmoil going on. That's if, right. if there's a lot of toxicness in the area, it'll just. Well, let's talk a little bit about the the toxicity in the air that can be in the home, and it was in your home as well. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about that because, and I don't know how deep you want to go into it, but you and Lucretia <clears throat> had to choose to have a good attitude in the midst of, of what was going on, um, right. with your child. Well, we don't have time to go into it in depth. So I just scan yeah. over the top and I think sure. you get the gist, but our only daughter was our treasure. You know, when you only have one kid, all your eggs are in one basket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's it. Your hope, your dreams, and that one kid is kind of unfortunate for them because uh, they've got a lot to live up to. Mm. And most often they don't live up to that. Well, she was just a beautiful and a precious young lady and a beautiful teenage girl ran in the Miss Texas contest and beautiful blonde girl and all the attributes that go on with a beautiful teen girl. She had her a red big Ford galaxy convertible. And she was on the raw, raw team and, and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, but always a good girl home at night by 10 30 in, in high school. And on the weekends, she had her friends over here. She didn't go out much. And so, you know, just a good friend. And then this hairy legged boy came along mm-hmm. and, uh, in the church and, they started dating. To make a long story short, they got married when she was relatively young and was pregnant the first year of her marriage mm-hmm. and had her first baby uh, around the end or a little after their one year anniversary. Make a long story short, they had two children, just second one, 17 months apart from the youngest. Mm-hmm. During this time, he had affairs. My long story short, the marriage terminated. And instead of my daughter uh, choosing 
to follow in the footsteps of her parents and our tradition of my parents and my wife's parents, uh, a pathway of following Christ and living for Christ. She chose the world. Mm -hmm. And we were as confused as we were amazed and not being able to figure it out. Plus the fact after her husband uh, divorced, her and her husband divorced, we had to take uh, uh, the two children, a little girl, 18 months old, little boy over three years old, mm -hmm. into our home to raise. Mm -hmm. While she would come and go, but she'd be gone sometimes six months, and we wouldn't know where she's were, where she was. Yeah. She got involved in drugs and alcohol and the adult entertainment world, and only God knows mm -hmm. what else. And you could only imagine. Apart. Uh, from anything and everything we believed in. And I would not let her come home because I had the babies. And I told her as long as the children were here, she could not come back home to live. She could come home to eat a meal, to shower, you know, or what, but, but not to live. Mm -hmm. And so it was. Uh, but then it got really bad. Uh, she tried to commit suicide, overdose. She was in the hospital. Doctor didn't know if she'd live or not. To know how impaired she might be in her mind. She came out of the hospital and bam, she's right back in the world. And to make all sure short, that has been since uh, 19, um, uh, the early 80s, okay? Mm -hmm. 83, 84. She'd been married eight times. Mm -hmm. And at 57 years of age, she looks like she's 70. None of her four children want to see her. They don't want to have anything to do with her. We are their parents, they think. I mean, they consider us their parents. <coughs> so in all of this, though, I had to have a reconciliation with God. Right. Because even I had people to wonder if what we had done to... For our daughter to take such a drastic turn. But it's like, you know, the disciples asked Jesus, is this man blind because his parents sinned? Right. Jesus said, absolutely not. But that the glory of God might be manifested. Mm. So in the interim time, I'd made a big study in going into 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, where David is in Ziklag. He returns and finds that his wife, his children, and the wives of his comrades and their children, their cattle, everything has been taken by the Amalekites and the village has been burned and they're left with nothing. They're so distraught. And when I read that, I thought, I'm David here mm. in Ziklag. And, and to make a little short, I, I, I did what David did. The Bible said he went in unto the Lord and he inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue after this truth shall i overtake them i think god was so enthralled by his faith and tenacity and aggressiveness shall i overtake them well the amalekites had numbered about three thousand men and david with his 600 men comes to 601 against three thousand is not a favorable number but god does not God does not calculate numbers when it comes to bringing, to bringing victory. He snatched all of the army away from Gideon with the exception of 300 to go against 30,000. Right. Now, my friend, if you're looking amazing. for numbers to stack up in your favor to win a battle, you're not going to win it because you need something besides numbers. You need something besides logistics. That does not equate into victory in the, in the people of God. But we are people just like Abraham. God spoke to him. Abram, 75 years old, said, get your bad self up and follow me. I want you to go to Canaan. <laughs> so he did. It's amazing, Jerry, because when, when you hear God speak, so many times it seems to be the opposite of what we would do if we were in charge of things. And I'm just thinking, let's go back to your, your daughter and the, surely you and your wife, Lucretia, you had to face an immense amount of disappointment, of hurt, of pain, of 
missed expectations, of dashed dreams. I could go on and on of the list of things that could have just done the two of you in because you're people of faith and you prayed and you were asking God to correct the situation, but the situation didn't correct for for whatever reason. And so a couple of questions, Jerry. How did you and Lucretia, how did you continue to pray in faith? Did you ever get discouraged and start to think either God's not hearing this prayer or we just don't get it? That's the first question. And the second question is, how in the world did you maintain a good attitude after all that? Well, I think the thing that caused, enabled us to persevere was the fact that as I read this, this scripture, God told me literally through the Holy Spirit, take this, develop a message and take it to the nation. Hmm. I took that message. I left everything else I was doing. Lucretia was working for James Robinson at that time, doing all of his direct mail and all of that and getting his books published. And and she would work Monday through Friday. I would take my bookings. I would preach Sunday morning, Sunday night, sometimes Saturday night in a place as far as West Chicago, Los Angeles, Fresno, Florida, all over the nation. For seven years, I traveled. So she was, I was mom Monday through Friday to these children. Mm -hmm. She came home Friday afternoon and I took off on Saturday morning and was gone on the weekend. And so I preached this message, pursue, for thou shalt overtake Mm -hmm. your, your health, your finances, your lost children, your calling that you once had, and you shall overtake it. And and, and you're going to get everything back that I gave you. And I made that the subject. And I, I this message has been preached in cathedrals and mud huts. It's been preached in open air. It's been preached in tabernacles. It's been preached in Presbyterian churches, Pentecostal churches, Baptist churches. Across the nation, Central America, South America, Canada, Africa, uh, Ecuador. It's a universal message. It is. Because yes. everybody faces those kinds of challenges where they don't believe that anything's going to change. And yet you learned um, through the school of life and trusting God how to persevere and how to pursue. I love the fact that you you, you never give up. You've never given up. You're still not giving up. And you're no. teaching others to keep pursuing and going forward. And to take authority over the situation. And, right? and, and you know, I... Can I just share this with you? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was in Fresno, the, the People's Church of 6,000 people on a Sunday night, and I gave the altar call after that message. And I remember the altar was just full of people. But I was king down in this one young lady standing in front of me, looked like a movie star. And I stopped, and she was weeping and convulsing. And I said, can I pray with you? And she said, Yes. I said, can I ask you what your problem is? She said, cocaine, fentanyl. Mm. And I would believe looking at her, she looked as fresh as a daisy. And, and so got to talking with her just for a moment. I said, and she told me she was doing like a thousand dollar a day habit. Mm. Uh, and I said, how do you support yourself? And she said, bold facedly, I'm a prostitute. Mm. I said, how did you make it here today? She said, Brother Hobbs, my dad is a deacon in this church. I was able to pour my heart out and cry with her, weep tears with her, and and give her encouragement. And the man next to her said, I just buried my daughter after spending $250,000 trying to get her cleaned up. I lost her to an overdose. So I found myself in the midst of this cesspool and I knew that God was using me and I could not give in to the frailty of life. I had to stay strong. And Lucretia, she don't ever have to pray to be strong. I mean, she is a a velvet (laughs) steamroller. You know, she she wakes up strong. She goes to bed strong. Oh, we love her. Yes. (laughs) Beautiful. Oh, so good. You you have, uh, you've certainly 
um, been tested and proven, I think, mm-hmm. in, in, a, in a lot of ways, both you and Lucretia. Um, but even now, there, there must be times where uh, obviously you would give anything for things to be different with your daughter. And your attitude still has to stay in check and it's getting tested. I mean, there, there are times where the two of you must, must wonder, you know, why, why wouldn't she turn around and change things or whatever other questions that go through your head, you could get focused on that stuff instead of sort of your, your present day victory. But how do you, how do you do that, Jerry? How do you keep a good attitude when everything around you says, you deserve to have a bad attitude about this. Right. Surrender. Well, you know, you ask where will it end? Mm. Where will this define, where will this finally end? This turmoil, this will she ever learn? And when I asked that question, God again spoke to my heart. And he said, She will never learn till you release her to me. Mm. We'll surrender. That was only couple of months ago yeah. and I thought great day in the morning I thought I'd done that <laughs> you know we think we do but then we uh, we're people of this mentality we can we think we can fix things right. people's lives yeah. God's not called us to fix things in people's lives. he's called us to to present the fix what uh, the solutions to the problem are not in how we fix it. The solution, the problem is in how God fixes them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so I had so to good. tell her, she was again, I just walked away from a 17 year old marriage and walked right into the life of another man who consequently today is in jail for molesting a 12 year old girl. Yeah. But her choices are so bad. You think what she ever learned? Mm-hmm. And again, no, not until you release her to me. That's so so I made her leave my house. Yeah. So Jerry, you you have been you and Lucretia have been through it, and I know that firsthand. But I also know that um, God has blessed you with other daughters in your life. Like I'm going to tear up yes. in just a minute because you have been and walked in my life in such a beautiful way. And I'm so grateful for the timing and the impact that you've had on my life, my salvation, and it's, it's created a ripple effect in my life and Todd's life. And, and every, I mean, I think of the people that you have touched, um, that are your baby girls, <laughs> your darlings, right? Like, like the, the daughters that, that God has put in your life that aren't blood daughters, but they're maybe daughters that, that you choose at the moment. Right. And, and he's, he's blessed us and blessed you with that relationship. And so I just want to say um, that God shows up anyway. Um, it's not always how we expect things to look, um, but, but he shows up and it's good. So, but here's what I want to ask is with everything that went on uh, and has gone on with your daughter, blood daughter, is there anything that you would have done differently than what you had done through the well, years? <clears throat> Obviously, that's kind of a rhetorical question, but obviously there's always things we could do differently. Sure. But could and would are two different things. Yeah, and past could have, should have. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But in response to Todd's second question, uh, what is your attitude? And again, I go back to the fact that th- your attitude is something that you build. You build attitudes. You know, somebody said, you have to love your Practice. enemies. You have to learn how to love your enemies. Mm. That's good. So some people out there just want to jerk a knot in. Mm. But that's not my problem. God said, hey, that's not your problem. You have your own stinking problems. That's my problem. Release them to me and love them through me. So I've learned how in my character to learn how to love other people that to me are abhorring people and, and, uh, distasteful people. Uh, I, I could, you know, uh, you don't have to give examples. <laughs> yeah, I could, uh, like, a, like a whole bunch of them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Whatever yeah. a bunch but is. that's the Holy spirit in you loving them the way God would. But, you know, when I see 
my spiritual children, such as you, Wendy. And we knew each other 15, 20 years ago. Is that right? Yes, over 15 years ago. Yeah. And I remember the burden I carried for you. And I guess I still carry it to a point. Because if I see you and I don't think I like to look in your eyes or something, I have to say something. And that's the grandfather in me. Right, right. Like I do to my children. What's like, going how you on? Doing? What's going on? And they say, what do you mean? I said, don't give me what do you mean? I can read to you like a cheap <laughs> novel, you know. <laughs> it's true. So that's just, that's the parent in us. And that's, that's the... My, 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 my commitment to people like you and Todd, that I always want to be there for you to, to instill things that, uh, I feel like are necessary for your, uh, to, to, to grow and, and to build your spiritual lives, your, your relational life. And, uh, yes, things will never be totally easy. There will never be times without challenges. But I got to tell you, folks, God is either God or he's not God. Mm -hmm. Now, when will we stop and say, my God shall? I love what you said, Jerry, about uh, in, in attitude, you have to build it. I think in today's quick get me everything right now world, uh, we forget that it takes time to do certain things. Loving people that are unlovable and building a good attitude is not going to be done overnight. Or maybe even and, reminding ourselves that we might be the unlovable one. That's exactly <laughs> so does, right. Does well, we'd rather that. not think that. Though, <laughs> that's, that's exactly true. That's true. Yeah, we'd rather not think that, but Part yeah, that problem. may be true, but I can't believe anybody wouldn't love me and mom over here. <laughs> oh, no, of course, of course. But yeah. to make a long story short, you know, um, we are called by God. Every life is called by God. Everybody is part of the calling of God within the community of believers. Yes. Everybody. To think that just because you warm a pew every now and then on Sunday, you're not important, is to miss the totality of what you've been created to do in Christ. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because we're here for specifics. Yeah. And, and, and I just, I hate that some people don't get that, you know. You have so much wisdom, Jerry, and I know it didn't happen overnight, and I know you're more wise today than you were when you were 20 years old <laughs> or 30 years old. There's an accumulation and life experiences rather than you sort of folding up into a ball and quitting or getting bitter and resentful. You embraced these challenges and you decided you were going to learn from them so that God could communicate a message that he wants to deliver through you. And I respect and I honor you for that. Uh, and I also want to let you know that, um, uh, and, and for our listeners and our viewers, Jerry gets on Facebook every oh, once in a while. I don't get on Facebook a whole lot, but when I do, he's in my newsfeed and, and I got to read it because he's not taking a selfie saying, look at me. He's, he's communicating truths from God's word that are very insightful, practical, and applicable. And Jerry, I love that you do that. And I want to encourage people to go there. Yeah. Uh, and, and Jerry D. Hobbs. Are you okay if they befriend Jerry you? Jerry D. Hobbs, yes. I, I'm sure you're Jerry probably at capacity with friends, but um, but maybe people can oh, yeah, still read 5, them. Oh, yeah, 5,000. But I, and I, I think I was down to like 49, 4,800. Okay, so someone somebody. can still squeeze in. Okay, Get in there good. because these are like <laughs> these are like short, little two-minute or less reads that will right. bring you a great and you know, I have a lot of passion. Very groups. profound. Yeah. I have a lot of pastors that write me and tell me, you know, I, I, I was overwhelmed this week and didn't have time to study, but thank God I read your post and God gave it to me. And I was able to develop that for a tremendous message from my people. Nice. Okay. Uh, that is nice. fantastic. And it's Look free. At that. It's and all it, free. It's all free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jerry. Yeah, don't, you don't have to give me credit because I don't want any credit. Don't care about the credit. <laughs> Jerry, you give out a lot of good advice and uh, I'm just curious. Can you recall anybody it's just like the best piece of advice that anyone has ever given you? Uh, yes. Um, I, my dad told me one time, um, nothing is forever. Huh. 
the good times nor the bad. My girlfriend had broken up with me. And I was so sorrowful. I was so sad. And I walked outside and he said, what's wrong, son? I said, well, Joe Laner broke up with me. Oh, he said, I'm so sorry. But he said, remember this. <laughs> Nothing is forever. Wow. Well, Love that. that puts it in perspective, though, right? That is good. That that's is a bumper really sticker good. right there. Nothing is forever. <laughs> no, that's except excellent. for eternity. But the word of God. <laughs> but the word of God. There we go. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's our default button. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for coming on our podcast. It's a joy and an honor. You know, it is. We just love you dearly. I know you've prayed for us numerous times. We pray for oh you my guys. Yes. Oh my, yes, he says. <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> yeah, Don't yeah. stop. And we pray for you guys and we just love y'all. Y'all are family. Um, but I want to wrap up our time together with um, uh, just something kind of fun. And then I'm going to have you close us out in prayer. Those that are listening that might just need to really hear a word of, of, of good, solid prayer uh, around attitude and God's truth. I would love for you to pray because you pray like no, nobody's business. But before we do that, just can you give us one something fun thing that maybe nobody knows about you that you'd want to share? What's something that you do or maybe a hidden talent or a gift? Um, a quirk. A quirk. What do you got? <laughs> Yeah, well, I like to fly bomber jets. No. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> you know, I don't do anything fun, and maybe that's Okay, maybe problem. it's not fun. Maybe it's just a, a different a, a talent or a gift that nobody knows about. Um, You're going to force him to make one up now. <laughs> Play, I don't know. Well, I saw this tutorial uh -oh. uh -huh. on YouTube about making Christmas balls. Uh huh. Actually, they up poster styrofoam balls. Oh yeah, my grandmother used to do those with with sequins. And they're just and stuff. gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. So I get me some styrofoam balls in here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to do that, and Lucretia comes over and looks on my shoulder and said, "That's the biggest." piece of junk I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. <laughs> and I thought to myself, we need people to bring us back to reality. <laughs> yes, indeed. That is funny. But you know what? Good for yeah. you. Good for you for attempting something new. I would and have never guessed that. No, that, I would have never, ever. Styrofoam ball Christmas decorator. I would have never, ever guessed oh, that. Oh, they're beautiful. I mean, it's just, it, it's. It's unbelievable how oh, that looks like there's something ought to be on a uh, Christmas tree in Buckingham Palace, you know. Wow, but not and, yours, but, not the one you did. <laughs> well, I so I realized okay, I had the wrong ball, it, it was not dense enough, it was too porous because uh -huh. it couldn't ride on it, and you, you know, and you made your lines zigzag and you can't cut straight lines. And so I realized all that, but not before my wife had seen it and said. That's the biggest mess I've ever seen in my life. That's Clean funny. it up, get it off my table and put it in your office. <laughs> so Papa Hobbs likes to do arts and crafts, basically. Mm -hmm. well, okay. You That's know, awesome. I like to work with my hands. Ah, yeah. And I found out how to make concrete, elaborate concrete pots, a decorative for outdoors, concrete pots. Did you just start doing this? Cement and rags. Cement and rags. Did you YouTube this or what? Well, let's just say it's possible. <laughs> and it okay. turns out to be some of the most beautiful stuff. And so, you know, I've learned how to do that. Wow. Good for you. I'm proud uh, of you. I mean, it looks like something Michelangelo carved out of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is very fun. No, we did not know that about you. So that's super cool. Well, thank you so much for being on your biggest breakthrough. You've had so many and you're so wise and we appreciate you sharing with us. Um, but please share with us your gift of prayer as we head out. Okay. Yeah. Father, I thank you for this time today with my family and friends here. I thank you, Lord, that we've been able to share things in our life that possibly would spill over uh, unto those who have 
like situations and crises and are facing those issues, oh God, and yet are dumbfounded at the perplexities that they're facing. Lord, my whole emphasis has been turn to Christ. Seek ye the Lord. Call upon him. Because you said in the day that you call upon me, I will answer. That's not a casual response from the divine. That's God saying, if I hear your voice, I'll answer you. Yes, but I prayed and I didn't hear anything. God didn't say he would, when he would answer you, he said he would answer you. So, Lord, I pray those that are facing these perplexities in life, teach us, Lord, to call upon you in your name and bring our problems to the Lord. And like the old song said, leave them there, Father, and then walk away and leave those issues on the altar for God to take care of in his time. And in his way. And Father, help us to trust you in everything that we commit to you, knowing that you have our interest at heart, oh God. And everything that perplexes us will perplex you. But you don't let things perplex you. Because worry is in our life the interest that we pay on a debt that will never be collected. Now, Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to let our hearers find peace and consolation in knowing you and walking with you, speaking with you, Lord, and in knowing you in such a personal and intimate way they can put everything that is perplexing them in their life before you, knowing that you are a God that answers prayer. Mm -hmm. And we praise you for it, and we thank you for it, O God, knowing that you hear us. In Jesus' name, Mm -hmm. amen. 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 And amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And amen. Love you, Jerry. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. We will catch you next time on Your Biggest Breakthrough. Blessings, Sherry.